Right, this is an update on my Setra Pump Up Pneumatic .22 air rifle that I said I'd be giving the other day. And I've actually got it working now. I managed to make a tool up with a thread to actually pull the valve assembly out. And it was this valve here um, that was actually sticking, plus the um, rubber on the inside of the valve here was solid. Um, it work hardened or age hardened. The um, washer on the actual inlet valve was also hard and not working. And I changed the main o-ring on the actual valve assembly as well. So I very much doubt that this rifle has been taken apart since it was made um, in the 1970s. So that's how old it is. This part here was a bent on the actual shaft so uh, when the hammer struck this one it would just jam at a certain point and obviously the air pressure couldn't be built up inside with the hardened um, seals anyway plus I don't think you can actually get the parts for this um, Setra rifle anymore they do look very similar to the actual um, Sheridan parts but I don't know whether the dimensions are the same. So in the end, I made this assembly up here complete. And it didn't actually take long to make because I made this end here first and rounded it off and bored it out to the right dimension for the seal. And I threaded it through with a 2BA thread. Then I made the shaft part and threaded that one up and screwed that into this assembly here with Loctite 638. I also drilled down about 8mm with a small drill and cut off a piece of the shank and Loctited that into the uh, brass shaft there and that's for the hammer to actually strike on the end of that one so it doesn't actually damage the brass. And before I put the pin into the brass there, I heat treated it so it's nice and hard for when the hammer strikes on it. Basically, I've just copied the dimensions of this one and made the same thing. Although mine's screwed together with the Loctite 638 rather than swaged together like this one. And I think originally the rubber was actually um, swaged into this one because it was actually impossible to actually get that rubber piece out of there you do really need a new valve I had a few attempts um, to get it right at first I used a rubber seal in here but under pressure that would actually work loose and come out so in the end I made up a PTFE seal to go in there so it is just below the um, face here and push that one in on nice tight fit and obviously it's drilled to go down over this shaft and then I got the housing for this um, pin assembly here put the housing in the chuck of the lathe and held this one tightly against the end so that the PTFE um, seal was lapped in and when I did that and put it all back together again, it worked perfectly. Plus, I also changed the lead seal that holds the assembly in and seals it all up. Um, for a PTFE one, I just copied the dimensions of that one and made it about the same thickness. When I screwed it together, it sealed perfectly. So if you watched my other video where I showed the endoscope going down inside this um, gun, this is the lead seal that I showed on the endoscope video. So now I'll show you some test shots using my new chronoscope. It's the E9800 Mark II, which I got from Banggood. It has some excellent features. It's a great tool to use and a great tool to have if you're working on air rifles and it's being sold at a very low price. And I did a review on this chronoscope um, some time ago, but now you can see it working again. And just see how useful a chronoscope it is. 
and in between the test shots you can hear me pumping the rifle up you can actually count the pumps and see the various different um, feet per second it's firing at in the end I pumped it up to 10 pumps which I think is the maximum for this type of rifle and it was running at 11.8 feet pounds which is just under the British legal limit so it's absolutely excellent So I'm very pleased with the results and I'm pleased that I actually persevered and made the tools up to actually get the valve out and it is actually quite thrilling to get a 40 odd year old rifle going again. So the only thing that I've got left to do now is to make up a sight. This is um, not too good, the one that was on it. And I do like open sights. It does have a scope rail, so I could put a telescopic sight on that, but in a way, I think it would ruin the actual character of the rifle. And hopefully in an upcoming video, I'll be showing some footage of some field target shooting using this rifle.